After my last video, I have gotten more than 300 new subscribers to the channel. Most of those, I'm assuming, are from Malaysia because the title of the video was Back in Malaysia, Halik Kampong. The only other time this has happened is when I published a video last year in August regarding Hari Kabangsaan, which is the national day in Malaysia. I had over 200 new subscribers then. And it seems like Malaysian videos, or the videos I make in Malaysia, are very popular especially with Malaysians. I have no idea why, but I'm very grateful for it. So with that, I say, Terima kasih kepada semua rakan Malaysia. I thought in this video, it might be fun to take a look at some of the comments I got on my previous video. Most of them welcomed me back to Malaysia, said to have a good trip, you know, things like that. I really appreciate that kind of sentiment. And I always appreciate a comment, no matter whether it's welcoming me somewhere or telling me to scram, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're watching the video and making a comment, I'm happy. But some of the comments were unusual, and I thought I would talk about those today. So prepare for some wise crackery. One of my most refined skills the one comment that stands out the most is one from a woman. I think she's from Pakistan. She was very upset with me because the video was made by an old man and it was boring. So as I make this video, I'm really trying to be younger and a lot more interesting. So to be younger, I got a haircut, as you can see. And hopefully this content is gonna be a bit more interesting than my last one. So if that woman from Pakistan is, want, is watching, please let me know how I make out. Another comment doubled down on my video commentary where I noted that airlines now keep the window shades closed almost all the time on a flight. So I think as long as there's another person in the, on the planet that agrees with me, maybe we can start a movement where you don't have to close your window shades on the plane anymore. That is annoying and it is kind of claustrophobic and it should stop. Attention, for safety, please stand behind the yellow line. Do not enter. Something people that just watch videos on YouTube might not know is that if you make a comment about a video that YouTube thinks is not appropriate, then they'll block it. I got two of those comments on my last, on my last video. And the way it's blocked is it just doesn't show up. You make your comment, you hit return or enter, and all of a sudden you see that your video isn't there or your comment isn't there. I'm getting lost in the crowd here. If you call me a raving lunatic, although you might have a lot of good reason to do that, that's the kind of thing that YouTube would block. So two of the comments I got on this last video, I want to talk about those and tell you what they were about. The first one commented that Europeans are lazy idiots. Now, I don't know where he got the idea that I was lazy, but that's what he said. Europeans are lazy idiots. First of all, I don't think I'm lazy. Second of all, I'm not European. Idiot, well, that might, the jury might still be out on that one. Anyway, that got blocked. The second one that got blocked was kind of unusual. I still don't understand what the commenter was getting at. He was commenting, of course, in Bahasa Malaysia, which translated into a rant about Indonesia. He didn't like Malaysia, and he didn't like Indonesia either. And he was, I don't know why he was telling me this, but for some reason, YouTube didn't let me see that one unless I really dug down to get to it. That one was blocked also. So I guess if you're going to make fun of Malaysia or Indonesia, then you're also going to get blocked. So that's the kind of comments I got. Those are the only two that I've ever got 
that were actually blocked because of their content, as far as I know. I, I don't check it all the time, but every now and then when I get a lot of views on a video, I'll check the blocked comments just to see if there are any. This time there were, there were two. I mean, you can try it out. You can call me a, a raving lunatic and see if it gets blocked on this video, just as an experiment. I'll understand. Another viewer writes, I would be honored if Mr. Bill is willing to come to our state, which is Sabah, one of the states located in the east of Malaysia. Now this one was especially interesting to me because new viewers to my channel might not know that I used to live in Sabah. The first time I came to Malaysia was in 1982, and that as, was as a swimming coach at the newly opened Likas Sports Complex. Likas is a small community just outside Kota Kinabalu, and uh, the ISN Sabah had built an entire a gigantic sport complex just outside KK. I think it opened in 1981, maybe 1980. And I got there in 1982 as a swimming coach. So I spent two years in Saba, And I think that's part of the reason why I like Malaysia so much. My time that I spent in East Malaysia, mostly in Kota Kinabalu, but also all over the state of Saba, is part of the reason why Malaysia has such a hold on me, I think. So I left Malaysia in 1984. I went to Brunei and I spent two, uh, two years there. And as you know, well, you may not know this, but you can look it up. The language in Malaysia and Brunei is almost word for word the same. Likewise, Indonesia, the three countries share a somewhat common language. So I picked up a lot of the language then. And in 1986, I left Southeast Asia and did not return until 2007. And that was for a short visit to Kuala Lumpur as a vacation. And then I returned again to work here in 2012. And I was here for six years. So, but most of that time was spent here in Kuala Lumpur. But anyway, that's the reason why I think Malaysia is such, has such a hold on me. I understand the language well enough to get along with it in superficial conversations. We're not gonna do any deep physics or nuclear science or anything like that. I'm not that skilled in the language, but I do have enough uh, of a background in the language to get along if I have to and out on the streets. So I, I will be visiting Saba in the near future, probably sometime in 2024. It won't be on this trip. I'm gonna be going back to the United States in December of this year, and I won't be returning again to Malaysia until the following year. So probably sometime in 2024, I'll be back in Kota Kinabalu. Another viewer writes, welcome back, Bill. Malaysia is having some heat waves with sporadic rains at the moment. So bring along a foldable umbrella with a plastic bag to bag it when it's wet. And don't forget to air it when reached your residence. Important trick tips on how to take care of your umbrella. Eat more vegetables and fruits to counter the heatiness. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay humble. I want to talk about this idea of heatiness. I, one of the guys I used to work with, Mr. Ong, if he's watching this, hey, Mr. Ong, he would always tell me about how to combat heatiness by eating different kinds of food. But I never really quite understood what heatiness really was. But apparently it's a thing because uh, Stargazer167 is telling, telling me how to avoid it by eating vegetables and fruits, and also giving me important information on how to take care of my umbrella. Another viewer has corrected my use of Malay language. In the title, I used to have uh, Balik Kampung or Pulang Kampung, and he said, we Malaysians seldom use Pulang 
except when one has died, Hulang Karamutula. So I, the, my first use of Balik, Balik Kampung is correct. And another viewer corrected me on saying that Malaysia is not a Kampung. Now, if you look that up, or if you're from Malaysia, then you know that Kampung means small village. I don't think anybody has to tell, tell me that Malaysia is not a small village, but Balik Kampung is a commonly used phrase, especially during certain holiday periods, most notably Hari Raya, or the holiday that they have at the end of the fasting month, the Ramadan. The two or three days preceding that and following that are Balik Kampung, where everyone in the country is on the move. Most people are on their way home to where they were brought up, away from the big cities and into their small hometowns. And then a couple of days after the holiday is completed, everybody's on the move back to wherever they started. So Balik Kampung is a common phrase used in Malaysia. It means you're going home. It also means that the roads are jam-packed and if you're not living in Malaysia permanently, if your hometown isn't here in the country, then at the end of every holiday period, it's best just to stay put. Otherwise, you're just gonna sit in traffic. Hisham Shah 7 writes, running away from the US is the best thing to do now because your country is about to collapse on its economy. I didn't know that. That's good info to have, I guess. Oh, here's, here's the Pakistani lady again. Very boring trip with an old man. Hey, am I looking any younger yet? Have you noticed that? Do I look younger? I know I'm much more interesting because I'm wearing my interesting blue shirt. So that part I think is, is, uh, is taken care of. But let me know in the comments below whether or not I'm looking any younger than my previous video. There were several viewers that commented on my 19-hour flight from Newark to Singapore. Apparently, there used to be a flight from Kuala Lumpur to Los Angeles on Malaysian Airlines. I don't think that flight happens anymore. In fact, I'm not really sure Malaysian Airlines flies to the United States directly anymore. But there are a lot of long flights. That was one of them that was mentioned. Another one that was mentioned was Malaysia to Dubai, which is really not that long. I think it's about seven hours, or maybe 10 hours. I can't remember exactly how long that one is. I never took that particular flight, but I did fly from uh, Abu Dhabi to Kuala Lumpur. That was last year, as a matter of fact, that was 10 hours. It's unusually loud here in downtown KL. Saturday afternoon, just after lunch. Another viewer wrote congratulating me on my use of kilometers and kilograms, or as I like to say, kilos. And I have to admit that it wasn't always like that. I did start using that as soon as I got here in 2012 when I started to work in Malaysia. And ever since then, it's just sort of stuck. Over the past several years, sorry, I've spent more time here than I have in the US. So I'm quite used to the metric system of measurement. And right now I'm dodging potholes and people and bicycles. So I guess the bottom line of this video is make a comment. If you have anything to say, if you have a question that you'd like me to answer, please comment below. 
I really enjoy reading the comments. And the more they're filled with wise crackery, the better. Speaking of the metric system, I just bought 250 grams of roasted walnuts. Or is it chestnuts? I think they were chestnuts. Or they are chestnuts. I've never had a roasted chestnut before, even though I hear about them often enough with chestnuts roasting on an open fire in the Christmas Carol. 250 grams, as you know, is about 500 pounds. So you can see that my command of the metric system is quite comprehensive. They don't call me the international big shot for nothing. I'm gonna wrap up this video now and say, oh wait, if you're the viewer who commented, hey cutie, get in touch. Be seeing you.